Welcome to today's episode of the Daily Coffee Pro Friends. Today on the podcast, we're discussing and addressing the question, why have we kicked the coffee can down the road for all these years? What do I mean by that? We find ourselves in 2020 in a situation that has presented us with a correction that we spoke about in the last episode of the podcast. We are undergoing a long overdue correction. The correction happened or is happening because we didn't address the challenges that we could clearly see were happening. And instead of addressing them to create a sustainable, long-term, viable industry, what we have done and what we did was kick these concerns down the road because coffee is a massively consumed agricultural product that is a staple in everybody's home and because we didn't invest the time and the effort into making sure that the branding of coffee was received by consumers the right way, we are facing a number of corrective points that are evolving now. What led to this? How did we as an industry allow this to happen? And as we spoke about the corrections that we're facing in the last episode, let's talk about what are the things that got us here and what are some of the things that we didn't pay attention to and correct in our history that have resulted in the correction that we're experiencing now. And number one, and I know you'll get, I'm sure you get tired of hearing me mention this phrase, but the low barrier to entry for our industry is our worst enemy because of the lack of accountability that comes with it. So because we have a very, very low barrier to entry, whether it be to be a professional in our industry or to be a business owner in our industry, we have no duty of care to the value chain. And because we have no duty of care to the value chain, the result is that people can take advantage of any of the stakeholders that they want to take advantage of. So the low barrier to entry is the first perpetrator that allowed us to kick the can down the road and we ignored, we willfully ignored this issue because it served many of the people that were involved in associations and in importing companies and just the whole value chain. It served more people than it hurt immediately so we didn't try and fix it we didn't see it as a red flag or didn't want to pay attention to it because we knew that it was one of those things would eventually fix itself so the next thing we have little to no protection for producers and because we didn't act quickly enough to to create some kind of protection for producers, what we're seeing is that producers and our smallholder producers are no longer finding it viable to produce coffee. So what kinds of protections am I talking about? We didn't protect the price that producers were paid. We didn't instill a minimum that we would pay producers in contractually. It just wasn't done. We have a system called the C-Market, that an exchange that dictates the price of coffee that we pay to commercial coffee producers, whether they be smallholder or larger producers. That model is set up to benefit one side of the value chain more than the other when a coffee price crisis shows up and because we just wanted to leave it to chance we wanted to leave it to these exchanges to have these 
kind of organic corrections. We kicked the can down the road and didn't bite the bullet and say, hey, listen, if we can make sure that we protect producers by making sure that they are paid a fair price for their coffee, well, we're going to have producers that are more invested in better quality coffee and more sustainable yields. And we didn't do that. We kicked the can down the road. And as a consequence, we are seeing more and more smallholder producers close up shop with regards to coffee farming and go into pineapples and avocados and macadamia nuts and all that kind of all those commodities that have that are much more economically viable for them now just as an aside on that be very careful in assuming that there is no grander design that is happening there and I don't want to get all conspiratorial and everything But just understand that once these smallholder producers close, the bigger farms that are operated by not so well-meaning corporations will control your supply chain. And that's a consequence of kicking the can down the road. There's always going to be coffee, right? Well, right now, Smallholder producers have much more freedom to produce the coffee that you need them to produce if you establish direct relationships with them. But once they've gone and you've got much bigger producers that are now dominating what coffee is produced, they will tell you, what coffee you can have and what coffee you cannot have. They will squeeze out the smaller guys and I'm sure they are happy to let the small guys just fail because they'll fail. They'll either decide to leave their farms because they don't have enough money to go into macadamia uh, farming and they'll sell their land to bigger coffee farms for pennies on the dollar. So just consider that as a consequence. Um, and, you know, this lends, a, uh, lends into another reason, the next reason why we kicked the can down the road, and that's colonialism. We, we looked at this power dynamic of, well, these people have something that we can go into their land, we can force them to produce And we can then take it back and make a healthy profit off it while paying them almost nothing for what they do, what they're doing. And kicking the social responsibility of that down the road is meaning that we are in the shitstorm that we are now in with regards to what's happening in 2020 and a collapsing value chain that has a shifting paradigm in the power structures that operate within it. The lack of reinvestment is the next thing that let us just kick the can down the road. We didn't reinvest in our supply chain we didn't see the value in reinvesting because when producers that we had been working with fell on hard times rather than reinvesting in what they were doing to reap the long-term benefits of those relationships we just thought well there's other producers and we kicked the responsibility can down the road when it came to this now the consequence of that more producers are going out of business We also didn't reinvest in our people in the consumer end of things. We're allowing people to enter our workforce at a low barrier to entry. We're not investing enough in cultivating them as professionals. And now what we're seeing is a disgruntled workforce as well as disgruntled employers because the lack of professionalism that they feel that they are due from their employees and employee Employees are pissed because they feel that they've given you all of this time at minimum wage. 
and they didn't receive enough in return. And I keep hearing this thing of your business would be nothing without me. An employer saying, but I gave you what you would do for working for me, which is your wage. We didn't reinvest in our, our people, our infrastructure when it comes to professionalism. And we are seeing the consequence of that evolve. It started in 2018, but we are really starting to see that amp up here in 2020. Another reason that we kicked the can down the road was because nobody showed leadership. And I know that that's a big statement to make and that may piss a few people off. But in my mind, there are people or organisations, particularly organisations, that really should have exuded more leadership when it came to establishing the brand of coffee globally around Uh, in different sectors of the coffee industry. We have a situation now where instant coffee and espresso and cold brew and roasted coffee and elixir and all of these things are called coffee. All of these things are considered coffee whether you pay a hundred dollars a cup or 30 cents a cup it's all coffee and there should have been more leadership being shown from different organizations that call themselves uh, leadership organizations and associations that you pay dues to that haven't taken the lead on how to establish the brand of coffee around the world also People that are establishing themselves as influencers did not show leadership in steering the industry towards sustainable success. They were purely focused on their own success. And that kind of selfishness did kick the can down the road. Somebody else will take responsibility for it. Somebody else will think about how we fix all the problems that we're going to eventually end up with. And here we are. And the final thing that I want to talk about, which will be controversial, the mark of success in our business, the heights and the pinnacle of success in our business is defined by competition and social media. That is how we celebrate the most revered in our industry. And that is... Absolute kicking down, kicking the can down the road for our industry. If we are celebrating coffee competitions as the peak of what you can achieve in the industry, and that's the greatest mark of success, and we're not focusing on ideas of building sustainable businesses and celebrating that, we're not focusing on building professionalism and leadership and celebrating those kinds of things what we're doing is we're cultivating an industry that's all about show and that may be idealistic of me but that's not a sustain that's not how you build a sustainable brand i think we can do better and i think that this community is doing the work to do better i'm really proud of you guys the the feedback that I'm hearing of the pain points that you're leaning into to make corrections for your own brand is just wonderful. You're legends and I'm really proud to be associated with you and to walk this path with you. Keep going. Peace, love and peanut butter friends. Have an amazing rest of your day.